This week, we're going to tell the story of a young woman from the Bland County, Tazewell County area of Virginia who was taken captive by Indians and eventually made her way back to her family and freedom under some pretty harrowing circumstances. Hello, folks. I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories by History of Appalachia. You know, Steve, you can't really talk about pioneering and moving back into the frontier, so to speak, the new land and everything, if you didn't talk about some of the names that's out there of some of the women that were you know, taken captive. Uh, Mary Draper is one of them, but Jenny Wiley is probably one of the more famous. I'm not saying that Mary Draper wasn't, but Jenny Wiley is probably one of the more famous uh, stories about how a woman was taken captive and then made her way back home. And it's a really interesting story. Well, the subject of our story was born Jenny Sellards in Pennsylvania around 1760. Like many other Scots-Irish families, Jenny's family picked up stakes and moved southwest down the Great Valley into Appalachia, eventually reaching Walker's Creek in present-day Bland County, Virginia. And it was there that Jenny met and in 1779 married a young Irish immigrant named Thomas Wiley and became Jenny Wiley, which is how she's famous today, even having a Kentucky State Park in Prestonsburg named after her. In any event, the young couple did what other couples did at that time. They carved out their own homestead with a log cabin and set about having children. Four of them, in fact, with another on the way in the fall of 1789. And it was then, in October, that Jenny became a part of the history of Appalachia. On October 1st, 1789, Mr. Wiley set out with a load of ginseng to trade for goods needed at the homestead. Jenny and the four children went about their daily chores while Dad was away, accompanied by her 15-year-old brother. Now, that afternoon, her brother-in-law, John Borders, came by. You see, all afternoon, Borders had been hearing the off-and-on hooting of owls as he worked his farm across from the hill and from where the Wiley homestead was located. It would have been strange, though, to hear the owl hoots in the middle part of the day, except for the fact that he knew that there were wandering bands of Indians in the area and that this was their favorite way of communicating with each other when they were attempting to keep their presence unknown. Now, John Borders was married to Jenny's sister Elizabeth. As it got later, with the sky darkened with rain clouds, he decided to make the trip across the hill to warn his sister-in-law and to invite her to bring her family and come spend the night at his and Elizabeth's home. As he knocked at the door and entered, he saw Jenny sitting in her loom, weaving some cloth for the family's clothes. He told her what he'd heard and what he thought it meant, and she promised him she'd come over with the children just as soon as she finished her weaving. Well, after finishing her work, she began to gather some things to take with her and the kids as she prepared to cross the hill to the border's home. It was at that point that the door burst open and 11 renegade Indians, two Cherokee, three Shawnee, three Wyandots, and three Delaware, stormed the cabin wielding tomahawks. She fell back into the room, clutching her youngest child, still a baby, to her breast. She was forced to watch as the renegades killed her other children and her 15-year-old younger brother. When their scalps were hanging from the Indians' belts, one of them lunged for her and tried to take her baby from her. When she resisted, the Shawnee chief, Black Wolf, intervened, after some violent argument amongst themselves, they left, with the chief dragging Jenny behind him as she clung to her baby. The party then began moving out, but not without problems. The next day, they stopped once for food and to rest for a while. Jenny refused the piece of dried venison they offered her, but since the baby was sickly and fretful, Black Wolf, who was also the Shawnee medicine man, went into the woods and returned with some herbs. He boiled the herbs and made a tea, which Jenny gave to the baby. Now, this seemed to do some good, and they pressed on. Jenny grew weaker as time went on, but she did the best that she could to keep up for fear of reprisal on her or the child. One day, a scout, whom they had sent back to make sure they weren't being followed, rushed up to warn them that settlers were on their trail not far behind. And that news rod did nothing to settle the Indians' anxiety. When the child began to cry and became agitated with illness, they decided to act. Black Wolf grabbed the child from Jenny's arms and dashed its head against a tree, killing it. And the party rushed on as fast as it could until they reached the Ohio River and the promised safety they'd find on the other side. 
Unfortunately for the captors, the Ohio was flooding at that time and was impossible to cross. Because of that, Black Wolf led the band back south into Kentucky with a very pregnant Jenny Wiley. The unborn child was no more lucky than its sibling. Shortly after the toddler was killed, in the midst of all this traveling through the backwoods, Jenny gave birth to her baby at a campsite they'd set up at Big Blaine Creek in present-day Lawrence County. Jenny was put to work and forced to perform the most menial of tasks around the campsite. As time went by, she also learned to speak and understand the language this mixed tribe band was using. One day, as she was working, she was confronted by a group of Indians who informed her that it was time for her baby to undergo the test by water to see if he would become a warrior. They broke sticks from the underbrush to form a small raft and laid the baby on a piece of bark on top of the raft. Now, they said if the baby didn't cry, he would grow up to be a strong and brave warrior and would be raised in the ways of the Indians. If he cried, he would not be a brave warrior and would be put to death. Well, Jenny attempted to save the baby by grabbing it from the raft and fleeing into the forest. Needless to say, she was recaptured and brought back by the Indians and placed the child on its makeshift raft. The baby naturally cried for its mother, causing one of the Indians to grab him up by the heels and smash his head against a tree as had been done before to one of his siblings months before on the trail. Well, after all this torture, Jenny was kept alive as a hostage slave by her captors for 11 months in what is presently Little Mud Lick Creek in Johnson County, Kentucky. During this time, her captors also captured a young white man who they tortured and killed by burning at the stake, telling her that this would be her fate as well. A Cherokee chief who was present at the time was so impressed with her stoic demeanor that he was determined to make her his wife and take her with him to his home in Tennessee. And that was, to Jenny, a fate worse than death. She began making her plans to get away, which she did once the right opportunity arose. Well, as is wont to happen in the Appalachian Mountains in the summer months, a terrible thunderstorm struck the Indian camp. In the middle of this downpour, lightning flashing and thunder cracking, Jenny Wiley managed to escape from the camp and make her way to safety at Harmon's Blockhouse in Johnson County. She returned over the mountains to Bland County and Walker's Creek, where she was reunited with her husband, Thomas. There, they began a new family, eventually producing five more children. Ten years later, around 1800, the Wiley family crossed the Big Sandy once more and settled permanently in Johnson County, Kentucky, near Paintsville, and the blockhouse that had been her salvation after her escape. Jenny Wiley lived in Johnson County, Kentucky with her family until her death in 1831. Now, she was buried overlooking the Big Sandy River near their farm where she spent her final years. A Jenny Wiley State Resort Park was established in her honor just northeast of Prestonsburg near Highway Route 23. Now, the park is centered around a 1,100-acre Dewey Lake and features the Jenny Wiley Theater. Jenny is also honored by a thoroughbred horse race named in her honor and run each year at Keeneland Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky. An event for fillies and mares, the race is called the Jenny Wiley Stakes and attracts some of the best female horses in American horse racing. And Rod Jenny's story is, is one of sheer faith, courage, determination, stamina, and tenacity that's, that's captured the hearts and minds of everyone who's heard it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you can't say enough about it. I mean, the struggle for her to try to survive, losing two kids along the way, the baby, and then, of course, her unborn baby, which was later born and so forth, and then the test of a warrior. You know, a lot of people would have given up a long time before that, but they, she had something in her that made her want to get back home and something that made her want to get back to her husband. And, you know, it was great that all this came about, but at the same time, here again, we get another story in here about these renegade Indians, all these different groups coming together. And, you know, here they are, even Cherokee out of it, Wyandotte, as you mentioned. Wow. Um, it's just a story that a lot of people may be scratching their head and wondering, did this really happen? Yes, it did. And, you know, it's been documented and, you know, she survived it. And, uh, you know, she's one of the survivors. And, yeah, she makes it uh, pure history from Appalachia. And folks, that's the story of Jenny Wiley. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. 
Now, you can subscribe to the audio version of the Stories Podcast in many ways. An Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Good Pods, Audible, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or on your favorite podcast app. Till next we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody.